the DOM allows us to dynamically update our page. In this video, we'll be taking a look at two methods for updating content in the DOM. Now we're going to take this moment to take a little deeper of a look into the structure of the DOM tree. Now before we saw how to use the child nodes property and the parent node and parent element property to go up and down the tree. Well, there are a couple of other methods that allow us to navigate the tree. So if we look at this list, we can see a full structure of the DOM tree created by it. Now for simplicity's sake, I'm going to crunch all the tags together so we remove any white space text nodes between our element nodes. So if we get our child nodes of the UL element, we get the list of three LI elements. Now each of these elements has a single child node, the text node of their contents. The text node's parent element is the LI tag, and the LI's parent is the UL. So we've seen all of these basic linkages, but there are a few others. First, each element has a first child and last child, which will point to the first and last elements of the child nodes list. Now, if there's only one child node, both the first child and last child will point to that element, in the case of our LIs and their text node. Now, if the node has no children, both the first child and last child property will have the null value, and we can see that in our text node. Second, we have the next sibling and previous sibling properties, which point between the siblings of a node list. The first child will always have a null previous sibling, and the last child will always have a null next sibling. Using the first and last child and previous and next siblings, we can navigate around the DOM tree in a very regular way. Now, if we want to manipulate the contents of a node, there are two handy properties we can use. One is called inner HTML, and the other is called inner text. Now, if we access the inner HTML of an element, we can get a string representation of the HTML inside of that element. So for instance, let's go ahead and fetch our UL tag. So we'll say UL equals document uh, get element by ID. And we'll call that, and we'll get the ID list. And so now we have our UL tag. And if we were to call UL dot inner HTML, and that's lowercase inner capitalized HTML, we get this string right here. And you can see it's multiple lines. So first we have a new line, and it's all tab indented just like it is in the source markup. And we get the HTML for our allies and all the text inside of them. And the other property is called inner text. So if we were to grab our UL, which we have right here, and we're to call UL.inner text, and that's only with a capital T in text, well, we can see that we get item one, new line, item two, new line, and item three. So it gives us the text that's displayed on the page, but it omits any markup or indentation that's a vestige of the HTML markup. So this is really nice if you wanted to, for instance, get the text of a paragraph in plain text, and that will leave out any formatting like strong tags, M's, A tags, or images. All of those would be omitted. So it's just give you the symbol text, which is really nice in some cases where that's all you really need. And now we can also assign to these properties, like inner text and inner HTML, and like magic, the element contents will change. So let's try setting the item text of item three here. So I'm gonna clear this out, and I'm gonna get item three, and we will get document dot get element by ID, and that's item underscore three. And we can see it's the third li in our list. So if we do item three dot inner text, and we say dynamic content a string, you can see that as soon as we did that, our text went from being item three to dynamic content. Now we can do the same idea with inner HTML. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab item number two and assign it to a variable called item two. And we'll use the inner HTML this time. So we'll do item two dot inner HTML equals this is, and we'll open up a strong tag. Strong. We'll close it. And we'll just say text. And now we have our string. So this is, this is with a strong tag text. So as soon as we do that, it updates its code. 
and we can see that the word strong is now wrapped in strong tags. So if we were to get item 2.inner HTML, we can see we get pretty much the same string back. Now what's really cool about inner text and inner HTML is that they actually use the same algorithms for parsing the text before it puts it in. So if we have some malformed HTML, the browser is going to be pretty lenient on you. So let's go ahead and take this, and I'm going to forget to close my strong tag. And I'm going to add some exclamation points to the end just to differentiate it. So if we were to just add it in, it looks like we have a missing strong tag, and we wouldn't know what's going on. So if we do that, well, we can see that strong is in the strong tag, but so is text and our exclamation points. So what happened there? We can see that the rest of the text isn't in strong tags. So let's take a look at item 2.innerHTML. Well, we can see what it did is it automatically added the strong tag to the end of our chunk because that's where it would expect it to be. It can't be anywhere else because you can't close the li tag without closing the strong tag, so it did its best to try to compensate for our malformed HTML. Now, you shouldn't rely on this, but it's nice to know that it will usually compensate for small errors for you. But you also need to remember that even if you assign to inner HTML, the value when you're retrieving it might be a little bit different because it takes these liberties for you. And so now we've seen how to use inner HTML and inner text to update the contents of our page. In the next video, we'll see how to dynamically create notes and insert them into our page.